Well, happy Monday, everyone. It's June 27th. Now, this weekend coming up, of course, is Independence Day weekend. And I want to make sure you understand that this coming Sunday, July 3rd, we will not have services here at E-Free Church. Instead, we'll have one service, 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning, at the Gaylord High School football field. It will be our second annual patriotic celebration. There'll be a mix of worship music and patriotic music. I'll be sharing a message. We'll be honoring those who lost their lives in the tornado that came through Gaylord earlier. And we're going to have a great time together. So again, this Sunday, join us at the Gaylord High School football field, 9 to 10 o'clock. We'll only be at the church if it rains. Well, We're looking this morning in Genesis 2 at the very first wedding. God officiates it in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve is brought together to be husband and wife. And God in Genesis 2.24 gives the purpose of marriage. He says, for this reason. What reason? Well, we saw it last week. For the reason that God created man with a need for companionship and the wife is God's plan to meet that need. For this reason... A man will leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and they'll become one flesh. Notice the three elements. First, there's severance. A man will leave his father and mother. You see, for most people who get married right out of high school or college, up until the time they get married, the most important human relationship in their life has been their parents. But the moment you say, I do, that changes. To use a Western vernacular, there's a new sheriff in town. And from that moment on, the most important human relationship you have is your mate. In other words, if you ever have to choose between pleasing your parents or pleasing your spouse, always choose your spouse. Your spouse must be the most important human relationship in your life. More important than your friends, more important than your parents, more important than even your own children. That's what the Bible teaches. The second thing is to be joined to his wife. That's the idea of permanence. But then he says this, and they shall be one flesh. That's unity. Now what's it mean, one flesh? Well, the only way I know to describe it is really a horrible analogy for a wedding or a marriage. It means this. When you say, I do, you become a two-headed monster. You see, when you started your life, you were in complete dependence on your parents. As you got older, they began to move you from dependence to independence. But when you get married, it's not a relationship of dependence or independence. It's a relationship of interdependence. In other words, the moment you say, I do, it's no longer, how do I see it? It's now, how do we see it? It's no longer, what are my dreams? It's now, what are our dreams? It's no longer, what is my goal? It's now, what are our goals? You see, the greatest privilege of marriage is this. You get to do this journey called life together. Jesus will quote that exact verse in the book of Matthew. Paul will quote that exact verse in the book of Ephesians. You know why? Because God's purpose for marriage never changes. The two become one flesh. And then the Bible says, and they were both naked and unashamed. So beginning tomorrow, we'll talk about the intimacy in marriage. Let me pray. So God, thank you for our marriages May we hold them in high esteem. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Monday. Join us again tomorrow for another morning check-in.